Welcome to Story Time. I am Reading Buddy. We bring you a story every week. Hello, friends. Have you ever broken other stuff? In today's story, two mice damage many things in the house of two dolls. How will they pay for everything they have smashed? Let Reading Buddy. Read you this story called "The Tale of Two Bad Mice." Oh, don't forget to stay until the very end and learn a Chinese phrase with Reading Buddy. Ready? Let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a very beautiful dollhouse inside a nursery school. It was red brick with white windows, and it had real muslin curtains and a front door and a chimney. It belonged to two dolls called Lucinda and Jane. They never did any cooking because the dinner had been bought ready-made. There were two red lobsters and a ham, a fish. A pudding, and some pears and oranges. They would not come off the plates because these toys were glued to the plates. But they were extremely beautiful. One morning, Lucinda and Jen had gone out of the nursery for a drive in the doll's carriage. There was no one in the nursery. And it was very quiet. Presently, there was a little scuffling, scratching noise in a corner near the fireplace, where there was a hole under the baseboard. Tom Thumb put out his head for a moment and then popped it in again. Tom Thumb was a mouse. A minute later. Hanka Manka, his wife, put her head out too. And when she saw that there was no one in the nursery, she ventured out on the hearth. The dollhouse stood at the other side of the fireplace. Tom Thumb and Hanka Manka went cautiously across the hearth rug. They pushed open the front door of the dollhouse very slowly. Tom Thumb and Hanka Manka went upstairs and peeked into the dining room. Then they squeaked with joy. Such a lovely dinner was laid out upon the table. There were spoons, knives, and forks, and two chairs. All so convenient. Tom Thumb set to work at once to carve the ham. It was a beautiful shiny yellow, streaked with red. The knife crumpled up and hurt him. Ouch! He put his finger in his mouth. It is not boiled enough. It is hard. You have a try, Hanka Manka. Hanka Manka stood up in her chair and chopped at the ham with another knife. It's as hard as the hams at the cheese shop," said Hanka Manka. The ham broke off the plate with a twitch and rolled under the table. Leave it alone," said Tom Thumb. Give me some fish, please, Hanka Manka. Hanka Manka tried every spoon in turn. The fish was glued to the dish. Then Tom Thumb lost his temper. He put the ham in the middle of the floor and hit it with the tongs and with the shovel. The ham flew all into pieces. For underneath the shiny paint, it was made of nothing but plaster. 
Then there was no end to the rage and the disappointment of Tom Thumb and Hunka Monka. They broke up the pudding, the lobsters, the pears, and the oranges. As the fish would not come off the plate, they put it into the red hot crinkly paper fire in the kitchen of the dollhouse. But it would not burn either. Tom Thumb went up the kitchen chimney and looked out at the top. There was no soot. While Tom Thumb was up the chimney, Hunka Monka had another disappointment. She found some tiny canisters upon the kitchen cabinets, labeled rice, coffee, sago. But when she turned them upside down, there was nothing inside except red and blue beads. Ah! <gasps> Then those mice set to work to do all the mischief they could, especially Tom Thumb. He took Jen's clothes out of the chest of drawers in her bedroom, and he threw them out of the top floor window. But Hanka Manka had a frugal mind. After pulling half the feathers out of Lucinda's bolster pillow, she remembered that she herself was in want of a feather bed. With Tom Thumb's assistance, she carried the bolster downstairs and across the hearth rug. It was difficult to squeeze the bolster into the mouse hole, but they managed it somehow. Then Hanka Manka went back to the dollhouse and fetched a chair, a bookcase, a bird cage, and several small odds and ends. The bookcase and the bird cage refused to go into the mouse hole. Hanka Manka left them behind and went to fetch a cradle. Hanka Manka was just returning with another chair when suddenly there was a noise of talking outside upon the landing. The mice rushed back to their hole. And the dolls came into the nursery. What a sight met the eyes of Jen and Lucinda! Lucinda sat upon the upset kitchen stove and stared, and Jen leaned against the kitchen cabinet and smiled. Oh wow! But neither of them made any remark. The bookcase and the bird cage were rescued from the hearth, but Hanka Manka had got the cradle. And some of Lucinda's clothes. She also had some useful pots and pans, and several other things. The next morning, when the nursery opened, the little girl that the dollhouse belonged to said, "I will get a doll dressed like a policeman." But the teacher said, "I will set a mouse trap." So that is the story of the two bad mice, but they were not so very very mischievous after all, because Tom Thumb paid for everything he broke. He found a crooked coin under the hearth rug, and upon Christmas Eve, he and Hanka Manka stuffed it into one of the stockings of Lucinda and Jen, and very early every morning. Before anybody is awake, Hanka Manka comes with her dustpan and her broom to sweep the dollhouse. Tom Thumb and Hanka Manka made a big mistake, so they had to make up for it. However, Reading Buddy would say that those two mice were really mischievous. Do you think so too? In today's Chinese time, Reading Buddy is going to teach you how to say "you are mischievous" in Chinese. 你很调皮，你很调皮。If you see someone break other stuff on purpose, make sure to stop them by saying 
你很调皮。You are mischievous. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time. 